And she won't be laying eggs this time of year usually either. I don't see any eggs. The new queen came back, was all killed by mites. But yeah, they pack on honey so fast, it blows my mind. Well, tomorrow's gonna be nice. I'm gonna job, I'm gonna pop out the saws. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, okay. God. There. I think you're gonna see him. All I did was hear him. Woo! Hold on. We're not done. We're going back. Okay. Here, I can hold it. <laughs> Be careful. Alright guys. You ready? Oh, why are you taking it off? I'm not taking it off, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. oh, okay. oh my gosh! <laughs> That is ridiculous. Like. Oh my god, the box is so heavy. Oh my gosh, yeah, that one's doing great. Um, oh I'll man. Kind of... Yeah, here. Take that. That box is heavy. Yes, it is. Um, you got a little crack in the front. Yeah, that's what I don't like about these other boxes that I built last year. Yeah, but it was a learning lesson. Oh yeah, it was definitely a learning lesson. <laughs> And if I didn't do it, we wouldn't have met, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> the universe wanted us to meet. Yeah, exactly. Because we're going to change the landscape. Like, we really are. But we're going to do it through our own methods, our own means. Like, mm -hmm. tell us, by all means, tell us what you think in the comments. We will try some of it, but we might try the exact opposite of some of it. Yep. But every single comment you guys leaves, leave always spurs an idea with us. So every single thing you guys say, it has so much value to us. Yes, it does. Can I do a shameless plug? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a shameless plug real quick. So I run a group on Facebook called The Baked Beekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'd, we would, I would like to get that more of a up and running and like start good live chats and good chats in it and start... Yeah. So yeah, um, come find come find us at the Baked Beekeeper. Well, hmm. me or her, both of us. I'm in it too, but yeah, I I need to get on Facebook more. But there's so much the website, the YouTube, the winery, the bee yard. Now T-shirts and merch I'm working on. So hmm. yeah, I have a Facebook, but I haven't really been paying attention to it much yeah, as much as I should. <laughs> we're we're learning how to uh, split tasks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So grow with us. Yeah. Is there one more in this yard, isn't there? Was there? Oh, oh we haven't that, checked down there. Yep. We do need to go down there. I was just wondering that. <laughs> so, those hives that we brought in back in the end of March, um, the pollination hive, well... Should I tell them? I feel like they should know. We're an all... <laughs> we're we're non-scripted, all open. Judge us if you want to, but... Yeah. You guys are going to see what we see, and you guys... You guys will love it, trust me. So, um, every single one of those hives, I we requeened this year. We had them requeen from the genetics that they had in the hive, so they made their own queen, and then whatever drones they found in the area. So I was like, okay, so at least they'll be getting in a little bit of good genetics, hopefully. Well, it turns out not a single one of those pollination hives survived. Not a one. Everyone died. Um, a lot of them had problems with small hive beetle. Um, I think we may have imported some small hive and be uh, small hive beetle into this yard from those hives um but they just they did really good this year they were so ramped up and just kicking butt bringing in tons of honey um but then they just kind of started to trickle down and they trickled down more and more and more some of them absconded so yeah but here's the thing they were treated no different than any of the other big hives you see in this yard no nope, all treated the same so that's no what we're talking about no, the like, genetic lines like you yep. you can like and we're not hating on the like we're not hating on the dude's genetic line or anything no his hating. bees were amazing how fast they built up like they were a game changer for us in the springtime like they did amazing <laughs> but they turned out to be better for bulk bees and there's nothing wrong with like i said there's nothing wrong with buying bees but like understand buy your first year buy a bunch like buy three hives 
see which one survives and then start working towards building off of that those strong ones yep because simply importing bees or getting bees that have been moved about from what i was told america tends to be the only people who beekeep the way that we beekeep every other country beekeeps differently yep and they actually judge us really harshly for the way we keep bees yep so any, like, of, any people from different countries in the comments let us know how do you guys beekeep we'd love to hear oh yeah we, we definitely love to hear some experiences like I, i'm really big into the european bee scene yeah like i really like what they do over there like yeah. um and how they treat the bees because technically we brought bees from europe mm -hmm. so they have a longer history than what we do here in america yeah and there's there's a fear factor here like they are they're trying it's a market they don't care if your bees live or die there's a market to be made so if you okay here's the thing you think that they, okay you they don't want to get rid of the mites they don't want the oh, mites oh no gone. they're making money off of it they they there's money to be lost. There's money to be lost when the the last mite that survives and then when the final mite dies and there's no mites left in this country, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a year are lost. Yep. They will breed bees that are less susceptible or le they will breed bees that are worse at keep treating mites because they know they can sell you the treatment. Yep, yep, so, exactly. And exactly. then what I was talking about, the whole people lose hives like it's a religious experience they're trying to get you to be afraid they're trying to make you afraid that you're going to lose your hives so that way you never even risk going treatment free because hey you're going to lose your hive you're going to lose your hive you're going to lose your hive treat with this treat with this treat with this treat with this and then in five years you've made just the weak bees as they have yep yep exactly so i'm all for the doubters but just stick around long enough to doubt us for a couple years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Don't stop doubting us. Because we ain't going anywhere. Around. We're in here for the long haul, so. <laughs> and one day, when we... You guys will see what happens. Like, you will see that we haven't treated our bees. You'll see the truth about our bees. And as you learn to keep bees with us on how we keep our bees, if you ever do get a hold of our bees, you'll know how to treat them. Mm -hmm. because yep. you can shock the bees like you can i could sell you one of these nukes i could sell you that nuke right there and you could definitely uh start keeping it differently than i keep it and they could hate that and they could abscond they could crash they could do anything yep. you can't sell your dog halfway through its life and not expect it to realize that it's got a new owner mm -hmm. same thing happens with bees yep exactly oh and also i did want to say so since we're on the topic of people from foreign countries if there is anybody that watches this channel that would like to chat about the different ways that you keep bees versus how we do here in america please shoot me a comment shoot me an email um at beefitbeekeeping at gmail.com because i am going to be starting a podcast really soon so i'm looking for the first set of people that i should have as guests on the channel um so we can work out the kinks and you know have some good conversations and have fun <laughs> I do dig kinks. I mean, yes, we should work out the kinks. <laughs> oh my God, love. another from your genetic line yeah which we might need to move this one that's fine we can why are they on about oh they're still over there messing with that those boxes and we might need to leave them for a little bit and longer it's cold too but if it's gonna be if it's gonna be warm the next two days we then can we, leave them. we'll we'll come out on tuesday yeah that's fine well it'll be wednesday because i'm we're harvesting tomorrow we're crushing at the winery we're doing our last rounds of grapes tomorrow we have like six different varieties coming in so it's gonna be a long couple days <laughs> what of kind of varieties press. of grapes are you getting in um oh i don't even remember all of them i know cab front cab Sauv. we already did syrah we already did chancellor i don't remember the other ones we're getting in some white grapes too though so usually with white grapes we have to crush them and then press them right away because we don't ferment them on the skins that's the difference between white and red grapes is red grapes will ferment them on the skins so we'll just crush them so it's super fast super easy but the days we have to press, they are long freaking days because it's a full hour per grape variety in the actual like juice press. So yeah, mm. I'll have more coming out with the, the, the grapes and everything too. Cause that is my other passion that you guys haven't even gotten to see yet. So 
I will definitely be bringing you guys along for one of those days. So wait for the first video when we start our first homemade wine and that should be happening yep. soon. Um, and then during the winter, we're gonna do a couple wine making videos. And some meads. I already have an and idea for meads. a cranberry mead that I'm really excited to start on. So we are gonna branch off into some of those videos this year and we yep. hope you guys will stick along and enjoy that too. Yep. Because, hey, they don't just make honey. They make you inebriated. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> oh my gosh, we should tell about our, uh, the thing that we realized the other day. That how the bees, they, they, okay, bees are so smart. Think about this, guys. They got us to work for them, so they didn't have to work as hard. That they did. They were like, you know, how do we get the humans to do what we want? Oh, let's just make our product sweet. And then humans were like, you guys don't get to die. We will keep you alive for eternity. We'll do anything you ask. <laughs> it's like, you ever heard that theory that uh, babies are born cute as a way of self-defense? Bees, I think, may, they, they use humans as a way of self-defense. We become, they tricked us. We work for them now. They don't work for us. <laughs> they do. We really do, though. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know if I can even get it. Oh, they're in that bottom box. There's still quite a bit in the top box. Oh, look at them. They're all trying to... See them right there? They're Ooh, all trying they to... Are. In the crack. They're going to bubble out. We might have... Um, yeah. Want me to? No. Um, yeah. Crack it. If we get stung, we get stung, guys. Woo! Okay, okay. We're putting that down. <laughs> oh, man. That's like happy hives. Yeah, until it stung me in the eyeball again. Again? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you... Okay, no stingers. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same. They're all empty. These are just empty boxes. Yeah. Nothing survived. Hopefully there's not a mouse in there. And then we have this one over here, which didn't get a queen until late because they failed to make their own queen. Then we put a queen in them. Um, not until... We put a virgin in there, was it like the second week of August? So they've had a little bit of a late start, so they're gonna be a little bit smaller, but they seem to be doing pretty good. All right then, oh, that's not good. Moisture. Huh. Yeah, we need to get foam out here. It has been raining a lot lately though. Oh, is there nothing? Did they, did they go? Oh, they're clustered. No, okay, so. They're a, clustered tight. No, no, this is good. We need a few small hives because we're running an experiment this year. Okay. So I would like to I would like to take this time. Can we show them something? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So all the really small hives that you see. Okay, it's like a little, little How cute. I don't know. Okay. Does that mean that the winter's gonna be long or short? I yeah. never know what the, the brown means. Um <laughs> so the cool thing, let's talk about this APMA hive, right? Um so pop it open, if you would, please. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take off just two of these sides right here, right there and right there. Nope, 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 front to back. You, uh, you'll pull out these frames. And then we'll pull out these frames. Okay, I'm gonna let her pull those out. Oh gosh. Mind you, this is all it took to start the. This is all it took. These boxes built the pollination hives. The pumpkin hives. The pumpkin hives. So they started in these. And then we're just given a few frames and we built them up from that. All right, so see this little piece right here? All right, pull that out. Oh, God. Um. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 So what'll happen is you can drop four frames right inside here. 
Um, so we'll drop four frames right inside here. Um, they'll share a conjoined wall between, between a lot of them. They'll share a conjoined wall. And these are insulated. And they're insulated. And uh, I'm going to 3D print tops for these that flip over so that way we can pour some sugar on it. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. But yes. That'd be perfect. So, that way they still have, that actually, why I didn't even think of that. Because we were supposed to have queens in each one of these like little cavities this year because we were going to experiment with having a small hive going into winter time considering these are insulated. So it may help them actually be able to get through the winter considering that they're small. I didn't even realize you could pull out this middle piece though because I was like, well, we should do it, but then how are they going to get any food? We'd have to like feed them like honey or something so they could then move it into the cells, but then they're working hard and... But we're yeah. just we're just gonna drop frames right inside and then the frames will sit in there that's like uh mike palmer's method he does mm -hmm. little four frames double stacked but like like i said i'm not i'm not a huge i'm not promoting ava may but this is their believe it or not we took a step back and uh we realized it's not about hive count it's about the experiment it's about Kind of figuring out. Oh, you're what? alive. That's a that's a queen. Is it? That is a queen. Look at her. That is a queen yellow jacket. Or is it a bald face? No, that's a yellow jacket. She's just. Oh, that a queen. is a yellow jacket. That's where she's gonna kill her. Yep. No. <laughs> if I'm correct, that's how they do it. They they only really only the queen yellow jacket makes it through the winter. I might be wrong, guys. But huh. tell us in the comment. What do you guys know about yellow jackets? that once you get them once if you keep beekeeping in that area then they get bigger and bigger and bigger as the years go on like in terms of like how many yellow jackets come back every year it's like once they find you they just start breeding yeah they're out here foraging i don't know what's left there's not much and that is why we don't use methods like robbing screens and whatnot because our bees have been bred up to understand it doesn't matter how cold it gets you need to go out and work yeah it's freaking 40 degrees right now and they're out here flying like it's cold i got three layers on right now <laughs> my nose is cold <laughs> can i just can i just say one more thing guys decide what kind of bees you want and then keep bees like that because yep. if you if you protect all your hives, you'll end up with junk hives. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, guys. You gotta like, you gotta stop letting everybody get you scared. Like, lose some hives. Stop fearing like losing. Like, you're not gonna be a professional beekeeper within the first. In fact, can I honestly say one of the reasons why you don't hear me call myself a beekeeper very often is because I don't believe you should get that title until year five. You yep. should be you should be proud to be a bee haver all the way up until year five. Show the people who've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years the respect to understand that they know what they're doing. Yep. They're beekeepers. We are bee havers. Next year, I get to call myself a beekeeper because it's year six. Yeah. Yep. So, I still have one more year after that because next year will be year five for me. So, um, yes. And I know that sounds, I don't know if that sounds janky or whatnot, but I truly respect the people who've been doing this for more years than we have. We're not here to tell everybody what to do. We're just here to like figure out what we're doing yep so keep telling us what we're doing wrong in the comments so yeah. that way we uh just do it politely guys again <laughs> yep. um, so that way we can use that as a method of kind of figuring out who we want to be because we know how we keep bees what okay that's an <laughs> I, that I thought it was a bee in your suit oh <laughs> but yeah we know how we keep bees <laughs> We like hearing how you keep bees. Yeah. And if we can mix that, mix match that all together and create a new way of keeping bees. Yeah. It'll be born in Bee Yard 51. Exactly. <laughs> and if you notice, like, we don't take bees out of here unless we know they're going to be like the pumpkin hives. So if they can make it here, then we don't have to worry about them so much because yep. we have strict rules here. Yep, we do. And I know that it seems like chaos. But that's how you breed good bees. <laughs> but nature is chaos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For example, that you could have a hive just like, say that, say that stack over there was a hive, right? It, but it was a tree. That tree could get hit by some snowfall and crash in the middle of winter. 
chaos happens in the wild so like we allow a little bit of chaos here we allow the robbing we allow yep. survival of the fittest means sometimes you don't get the outcomes you want yeah. but you still get an outcome Exactly. Well, I guess that's it from us today. Thank you so much for following along, and I hope your bee yard is looking fabulous, even if someone were looking kind of weak. And hopefully, some of the things that we said can help cure your oh, please don't come over here can help cure your like pre winter anxiety that we all seem to get as beekeepers. So, anything that you want to say? Um, you guys are awesome. Keep watching. Yep. And don't quit. Be fit.